Uh, one of the other things we wanted to talk about, I don't know how many of you are on Facebook, but we talked about maybe putting Highway 20 Association um, on Facebook. Is that something you have a desire to do? Will you post updates here and there? Do you want us to work on that? Do you care? What, could Jacob's like, okay, <laughs> do it, huh? That's, that's an age that's, question. Yeah. That's okay. age-related. That's yeah. age-related, okay. <laughs> well, I, I would comment on that, that if you're wanting to share information and educate the public, then I think that's a really good way to get the word about what the message is, why we need four lane Highway 20. If you want to educate the public, they're listening. And that is a definite social network that I think you should be using because they can be passive about it. They don't have to attend a meeting. They can find out what's going on without actually being a part of the organization. But at least they would have the information. Certainly we have a whole new group out there to educate. So we can, we can, do, we can handle that. Okay. Um, we have down here inviting the gubernatorial candidates to meetings before the November election, and certainly we would wait until after the primary to do that. How do you feel about inviting our candidates here so they know how important it is? So um, certainly we would look at, at maybe the July meeting and, and September meeting to get them there. And after that, then we will know whether we have different leadership. Um, Shirley? Yes. Would you want to stop this with the gubernatorial candidates? We also want to go and maybe the Senate and the House candidates along the route too. Certainly should. I know that there'll be a huge turnover in the Sioux City yes. area, and um, I think there are 18 seats to fill, and uh, so we do have a whole new group of legislators to educate about everything in the state. So. We could certainly do as much as we could in that area. And Sioux City would be a great place to do it. I think what you're alluding to is very critical to the cause now because we've gone for a few years where we kind of slid because we knew everybody. The players have changed. Right. So we got to go back to education mode 101. Mm -hmm. and, and specifically in the, in the Sioux City area, there'll be a huge change. So. Mm -hmm. That needs to be something we need to address in the area. And as they change, so do their assignments on the Transportation Committee and whatever. So, okay, any, yes, Tony. Yes, I wanted to mention, I brought a couple our couple stacks of brand new maps that just came out within the last month, 2010 maps, so. Okay. so yeah. And a question I have for you. These maps were presented at the 2005 and 2006 public hearings. I think we need new maps for Calhoun, Sac, and Ida County, well, whatever you have for Ida County, but. Wait, are, are there different maps than these out there? You're still working the on The last two. ones, uh, I think that would, these. That's all the this is it, huh? Because we certainly pay you for a set of updated maps. Because And I'm missing a gap somewhere between Calhouns and Sacks, too. But um, it, w it helps us to explain to the local people where you are as far as completing the project itself. He's proud yeah, well, you're looking great. That's all you have I mean, to work with too, right? I mean, if there's, uh, I guess I didn't look and see what, what gap you're talking about. But basically, the ones we went out to the public when we knew what the right-of-way was, that is going to be the only, the latest map that we have. Okay. And But if you're missing a gap, I mean, generally we gave them to the uh, counties. And, and, the and if, there, if it was affecting a city, we would have yeah. given them a copy. But... Uh, Okay, I didn't know if there were newer ones, because these were all the proposed borrow pits, and I didn't know if you designed new maps as you no, went or no. Okay. Actually, that CD I gave you a while back should have all of them on there, okay. but that's all. Okay. Know. Sure, there is one, uh, just to talk about, I might offer some perspective on this. Yeah, I've been keeping track of a project in Missouri, kind of a similar one, uh, between St. Joseph and Hannibal. Okay. About a 60-mile stretch there, between, uh, just, just four lane, just out of St. Joseph to four lane, kind of a handful. There's about a 60 mile stretch. Or in the last five years, they've conceived it, designed it, voted on it, funded it, and by the end of this year, it'll be 60 miles and finished. And in the time it took us to even talk about six miles of this over here, they basically covered 60. So, I, do, do we have people to go back and forth and say, how'd you guys do that? What was different about your state than ours? Uh, it's a Midwestern city, kind of a similar. It's very similar to what we have here. We probably have to look at their sales to, or their gas tax because you know we haven't raised our gas tax since 1989 here in Iowa, and we ran up against 
frankly, the governor. You know, he was the one that totally put the kibosh to everything that we've tried for the last couple of years when it's the fairest tax that there is. And I know gas is going up again, and I have two gas hogs, and continue to pay it no matter what it is. So it only makes sense that we go back with the same argument. Daryl? Do we have enough support from our area industry? I mean, you hear them say, yeah, this is going to be good, and I'm thinking particularly in agriculture. How many people do we have, big firms, that represent <coughs> a lot of use of the uh, of the interstate system to support how we claim? I can't. You know, uh, Bob mentioned Blue Bunny. Well, you could add Schuster and 20 other big companies to that. Sure. But sometimes I just feel like we're sitting here doing their dirty work for them, you know, because they don't want to upset are. anybody. They yeah, I know. They because we, they don't want to upset anybody. You know, we need it, but uh, good luck. I think it's time to call out some of these guys and say, hey, you know, if the, the president of Blue Bunny, in, in, for example, only, or Schuster Truck Line, or any of the big companies over in the western side of the state, if they went to that DOT meeting and really had their, their stuff together, I think that would make a far bigger impression than, with all due respect to Steve or Bob or Buck or any of the guys that go to here they are again, they're good old boys, and yeah, we're going to listen to them because, by gosh, they're trying hard. I got 600 trucks and 200 of them are sitting in the yard every week, all week long. I'm the guy you want to talk to, and then I guess my other thing is, well, I agree on the gas tax thing. How many of these guys are going to support us if, if we're going to talk gas tax increase? Actually, <laughs> the wear and tear on their vehicles is costing them far more than if they were to on the I gas agree. tax. And they know that. Yeah. Decker was pretty blatant about the fact that they'll phase in over a period of time, but they realize and uh, recognize the use of that and are, are, are supportive of it. So, mm -hmm. And that's been their message for a good long while. And I'm not sure that that's, that, but that is also the same message that you're going to get out of the association, too. Well, and we, we have taken them in the past, but like you said, the, certainly the commissioners have changed and perhaps they need to hear from them. But we have taken Blue Bunny and a bunch of those people into the commission meetings. Um, in fact, Schuster and Blue Bunny were both in Sioux City mm -hmm. a couple years ago when, when they were there. So it does help to take them in. It helps to take bigger guns than we are. But, um, and we can certainly line them up to do that, you know. But that was the key to your success maybe two years ago as well. Yep. And that only goes for so long a period of time. It's kind of like the last guy I talked to is how I vote. It's not quite like that, but you've got to turn the heat up. Well, I'd like to see the Iowa Peak and Grain Association be a, uh, approach. Nobody, <coughs> nobody uses that interstate system more than agriculture. And particularly now, we've talked about this before, but it used to be they'd pull a tractor or a trailer with a, uh, a tractor into town with a grain. Now they've all got semis and lots of semis. I know farmers that have got two or three semis, but they're just sitting there in the wings. And we're not, I think we need to go after some of those. The Agribusiness Association of Iowa is, could be a huge voice for us. And that's either Mona Bond or, uh, I, I can't think of the name right offhand. Mark Reisinger? No, not Mark, another gal. <coughs> okay. Well, you, know, you, you mentioned a little while ago about uh, educating our new lawmakers, and I think one of the things we need to educate them on is the bottom line being that this four-lane highway is certainly going to enhance the economy of the whole state, not just certain people. Absolutely. And and this is what they need to know. This is what they're there for: is to enhance our state. And the economy will be enhanced by the four lane night. Well, maybe it'll help that a new casino be built in Northwest Iowa, too. So, yeah. mm -hmm. leave another road, Steve. Now don't get excited, Jay. One final. <laughs> 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 I 